There is absolutely no excuse for y'all not to play Fat Textile. And I know that y'all are fixing to flood the comment. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, no, there ain't. And I'm, I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to kind of try to debunk that. It's going to be a little tough love video. I love y'all. But if you have Alt F4 out of the game or you don't want to try Path to Exile because of whatever excuse, and that's just what it is, I'm going to try to debunk some of those. Let's dive into it. Come on, you piece of junk. It's hog, baby. So do me a favor, please watch to the end because I'm not going to sit here and shit on y'all. I'm just going to kind of pick apart a couple of these excuses that I'm seeing throughout the community. I'm not singling anybody out. Just uh, there's a couple of very common ones that I'm seeing. Uh, the first one is the skill tree is too advanced for me. I all tell four just the second I saw the skill tree. Um, I 100% relate to you. I did the same thing a mm, long time ago. But if you've played Diablo 4, this is not that big a deal, okay? Because this is the Paragon board. Diablo basically tried to rip the Paragon board off of Path to Exile's skill tree and did it a lot more simple, but made it worse. Diablo 4's Paragon board is attributes, stats that connect passives that boost your damage or modify your character in some way, whether it's like shape shifting damage or poison, or then you had the unique nodes that did certain things. This is no different. Like this right here, unique node. This is basically a paragon board. You remember you put the different pieces together. This is already put together. It shows all the characters also. So this little 1994 Dodge Viper Rim is Witch's starting point. It would have been a lot better, in my opinion, in the tutorial, you know, first playthrough, if they had put, like, either a warning or a fog of war or whatever until you get out of the tutorial or get to level 10 or whatever the mark would be to disable that system. Uh, hey, you're not going to use everything on here. Don't let it, you know, don't let it overwhelm you. This is a, a, a pure player way kind of game you remember when we were promised play your own way this is what a skill tree that's play your own way looks like okay don't let it overwhelm you how many of these am i actually using in this character most of them are stats look strength 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 intelligence it's not that big a deal if you were able to figure out how to put glyphs in to make a radius that affected things what is this right here it's a gem with a radius that affects things. So let's just go ahead and, and lose that uh, that excuse right there. Because there you go. Another reason that you would fail in Path to Exile or it wouldn't be your uh, best experience or whatever the deal is, is mental. I was watching Belton's video about printing divines or how he makes divines without running maps really early in the league start. Uh, there's a link to that video in the description below if you want to check it out or if you want to check Belton's channel out. Everybody knows Belton, but if you're a new player and you're really interested in getting into crafting, Belton's one of the best crafters in the game. Um, he deals in mirrors, and uh, he has a wealth of game knowledge and a cool personality, so you know, go check him out. But he said something uh, about seven and a half minutes into that video that I had to go run and write down so I could feature it in this video today. This is the main reason why a lot of us new Path to Exile players fail right here. A lot of the times what, what prevents people from succeeding in the game are these like mental barriers they put in front of themselves. Either, uh, you know, they try to set goals but are not honest with themselves about their willingness to accomplish them. Or, um, you know, they set unrealistic goals or they um, just think that they can't do something because it's, you know, it's not habituated or ritualized yet. Um, and, you know, a lot of the time, the things that may seem complex or seem like these grand chase pursuits or items, they're really actually just a series of uh, very, very simple processes. And I hadn't thought about setting a goal like he's talking about. And then it all made sense when he said that, because I thought about all the numerous people that I've had come over to my Twitch stream and ask me what my goal was for this character. And it never, I was like, goal? Huh? And then it all made sense once I heard Belton say it that way. And then it, you know, it all came together. I said, 
well, damn, that's what I should be doing. That's what everybody as a new player should be doing is setting an achievable, realistic goal. So if you're brand new to the game and you're playing through the campaign, set a goal to finish the campaign. So that way when you're done with a campaign, it's a pat on the back. Set a goal to get to level 80. Set a goal to make it to one of the end game, the various end games that they feature. But that will really help you if you have an open mind and you're willing to try this again. And that's kind of goes hand in hand with this is sometimes people can be obtuse and not realize it, just don't want to do it because they don't want to do it instead of just kind of being open mind a little bit. Imagine that a redneck telling someone to be open minded. I try to be as open minded as I can at all times. Sometimes it's not always that way, especially when I refuse to play a game because I'm focused on this game. We're talking about last epoch. Anyway, open the barriers up in your mind. Yes, it's a super, people use the word bloated. Sure, you can say that. Bloated just basically means, the way I perceive that, it's like full of gas, no substance. That's not true. There's so much substance. It's be best way to look at it is Mount Everest. Yeah, it's Mount Everest. But do you know how many people have climbed Mount Everest? Lots and lots and lots. It's not like K2 or something. You know, it's not an unachievable goal. So don't be obtuse with trying the game. I say that out of love. Don't let fear stop you from enjoying the game. Play the game. The next thing that leads into it is I'm not smart enough to play this game or I need a PhD to play this game or, um, you know, you got to be a damn super smart guy to play the game. I play this game. I'm a dumbass idiot redneck from Georgia. It was educated by the Georgia school system. What are we, number 42 in the damn nation? I don't know simple math. And that's not, I don't play a character. Some people think that. I, this is just me. So this is no bullshit. I don't know simple math. Yeah, I know like three times three is nine, but I don't know if you were to come in my chat and say, hey, Hog, what's 14 times seven? I have no fucking clue. If you were to ask me addition, I would have to think about back to second grade, a little trick that we were taught or like count on my fingers secretly behind my back. There's no shame in my game. You know, I'll just tell you straight up. Thank God our teachers were wrong about you'll never have a calculator at your disposal. Well, thank God we do. That doesn't stop me from playing the game. If I'm able to, yeah, it took me five days to put this armor stacker together and to understand how to get all the skills to work because it's a super advanced build. But if my dumb ass is able to set up something like an armor stacker scion, and there's absolutely positively zero excuse as to why anybody can't come in and try the bare bones, easy builds and have fun playing this game, period. My girlfriend, who is brand new to video games, literally never played a video game before ever, wanted to try out Path to Exile when she heard there was math involved in the game because she loves math and she's playing it. She has two characters now at level 25. And of course, all the players know that's level 25, whatever. We're talking about a gal that's never played a video game before ever and poe is her first video game and she's got two characters to level 25 and loves the game no excuse for you're too stupid to play the game because i'm stupid and i play the game so let's throw that out the window and the last big major excuse that i see well i guess there's no one after this but the, the biggest one that i see is uh, i don't want to play poe one i'm going to wait for poe two and I'm the biggest advocate of don't wait for PoE 2 because you have a great finished game right here that has tons of in-game, great itemization, customizable hideouts, all kind of microtransaction cosmetics if you like cosmetics because there are people that like to collect cosmetics and do stuff like that. That's in the game. I guess my point is there's all kind of damn things for you to do in the game. You can set up a shop and just trade. You can craft and trade, you know, like multiple ways to play the game. Multiple, 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 multiple end games. So the analogy that I came up with, and it's not going to be the toilet one. I know y'all didn't like that one. This is more like looking at an ARPG as a swimming pool. 
and you love swimming pools, so you go to the the ARPG swimming pool resort, and everybody's in that swimming pool, and it's badass. It's got a wave runner, and it's got damn a bar in the corner, a swim up bar, and it's got you know fountains and water slides and high dives and my fat ass coming off the diving board and deep end yelling cannonball like that dude from Sandlot. Cannonball! There's all anything and everything you could want in a swimming pool is there. And there's you. And you're standing outside of the swimming pool with your t-shirt on because you don't really know how to swim too good. You're new to pools, but you really love swimming pools. And everybody in, in the swimming pool is going, come on, man. You're going, no, nah, I don't think so. And you look over, and next to that badass swimming pool, there's a pool that's under construction. It's made by the same swimming pool company. It's going to have the same foundation. It's going to have the same systems and plumbing and all. It's just going to look a little different. It's going to have a couple of different extra features. Maybe there's a different swimming pool uh, slide. Maybe there's a two or three high dives instead of one. And it's got a different color liner in there. It's blue instead of this other one's green. And it's got a different tile set. It's still made by the same people, but you're going to have to wait like two years for the game to be done, for the, that pool to be done, for you to go play it. And all you're really seeing right now is like, there's a big bulletin board. Coming soon, this is what it's going to look like. So you're looking at the pool now, but you're looking over there going, nah, I'm going to wait two years on that because I just don't really know. This is too complete. When there's a lifeguard, there's a whole encyclopedia of swimming techniques. All your buddies are there. The community's there. Everyone's going, come on, man. It's badass in here. Come on, get in here. It reminds me of when I was in middle school and I was, you know, real chubby and I was scared to take my shirt off to get in the pool at the pool party. And everyone was looking at me like, dude, we don't care. Get in here. Yeah, there are going to be some people that picked on you a little bit, and that's life. But uh, that's the analogy that I think of. We got you. If you're scared to start this game because you're looking up at Mount Everest, let us be your Sherpa guides, baby. We got you. So, I, you know, I've got a clan in the game. I've got a Discord. It's got really good community members, knowledgeable guys, gals that have been in the game for a long time. Uh, we're, you know, we're making friends in the community with other creators. We've got a really cool stream with a really good bunch of guys over there. We can help you. If you're struggling, if you need assistance, we got you, baby. But that's all I can do is try to just beg you to drop the barriers, drop the preconceived things you hear like, this is the best one I love and I want to shoot this down, is if I make one wrong decision, it bricks my whole character. No, it don't. No. If you pull up your passive tree and you make a mistake because... Let's say you want to play through the game the first time and not use a guide like I did and just blast through it and do whatever you want to do, which is, again, a true ARPG is play however you want to play. And you make a, a bunch of wrong choices on the passive tree. Well, you don't have to delete your character and start over. You just need an Orb of Regret. So there's a currency item called Orb of Regret. So you just get some of those. Now, I will caution you. You will see conflicting advice on how you should start as a new player. A lot of people think, or their opinion, opinions are like assholes, everybody's got one. Their opinion is start at Solo Cell Found. That way you learn everything about the game. It forces you to learn the systems and you better, you know, you'll get it all figured out and you'll know. And then there's the other side that says start with the trade league so you're not locked out of help. If you are not a super badass, devoted, rack style, can pick up any game and excel at that game and willing to push through hurdles and, and willing to break through those gates and farm for multiple, multiple, multiple hours to try to find some things and do that, then Solo Cell Founds a way for you. But I personally advise a regular player to not go solo self-found until you understand a little bit about the game. And the reason is because of bricking your character. If you want to play the game your own way and you brick your character because you made a shitty passive tree, which you will do, 
If you're solo cell found, nobody can help you with regrets. So you're not able to go into general chat and say, can somebody donate me some regrets? I'm a new player. I really screwed up. You're on your own. You're going to have to start a new character. If you're cool with that, cool. If not, just take that advice. If you're solo self found, you come on my stream and say, hog, I fucked up. I need some regrets. And you're solo self found, we can't help you. If you're in trade league, we can help you. Trade league also benefits because if you don't want to farm, let's say for an, something to go see the shaper. If you don't want to farm for that specific fragment or whatever it is, it drops for that boss, you can go trade for it. And uh, that really helps knock down some of the gates that people are experiencing. And a lot of that is they're choosing the wrong game mode. So just be aware of that. If you tried Solo Cell Found your first time and you've got a bad taste in your mouth, that's why. Because you were locked out. You weren't able to get help. It is a complicated game. You're going to need help. When you first learned how to swim, majority of y'all had somebody teach you how to swim. It's the same way in Path to Exile. It is a good thing to have lots of content. We've been conditioned as former of the game that should not be mentioned players to have a drop of content and not have anything to do, not have a lot of challenge, not have a lot of bills to try to overcome certain challenges that present this and that. We're not used to that. So when we play a game that's what it should be, when we play a game that presents all of those things, we get overwhelmed in Alt F4, and then we we complain. And I, I'm saying we because I did that before, before I tried it again, and now it's my favorite game. Look at my hideout. This is the Cosmic Turtle. We got Enar over here in his jail. We're flying through space. We've got a lady bent over showing her hiney with lava pouring on it with the waypoint right here so you can go through the birth canal. <laughs> We've got my name down here in logs. We've got our map device right here. We've got women statues that are overlooking our flight path. And then, of course, a badass crafting bench and our D4 bad shrine. Just a small sample. It's everything I wanted. I feel like a used car salesman for the game. I've gotten a bunch of people in my in real life life to try it and play it. My core guys that I played Diablo with, still got a couple that are holding out, but you know, a couple of my core guys that I played Diablo 3 with are now playing Path to Exile. They're hooked too. So just wanted to make this video and plead with y'all. I've seen a lot, of, a lot of the creators coming out with, should you play a guide or should you do this? Play how you want to play. Just don't set unrealistic expectations for yourself. You wouldn't go order a $5 foot long and the whole thing in one bite. No, you would take little bites of it. Majority, you wouldn't finish the whole thing. Uh, you wouldn't look over at Badlands Chugs because he's got eight $5 foot longs. I know they're not $5 anymore. And he's eating them all at one time. You wouldn't look at him eating them and go, can't do that. can't eat this because he did that. So give it a try. We're here to help you. Join my Discord. Come follow me on Twitch. Like and subscribe for more content. I got tons of, not tons, but I got a few videos out. If you're a Diablo refugee. You're coming into POE for the first time. It'll explain skill gem systems and links and just the bare bone basics of the game. Anyway, appreciate y'all. See y'all next time.